Kyle Busch's NASCAR seat at Joe Gibbs Racing is in major jeopardy. He's in big sponsorship trouble. He had a sponsor on the line, but lost it. And now Toyota is talking to the media saying they're in big trouble. In this video, we'll be talking about the recent quotes that have sparked a lot of discussion about the dwindling sponsorship options to keep Kyle Busch at Joe Gibbs Racing in 2023. But here's a hint. It's not looking good. But first, we got to talk about NASCAR in Chicago, which was officially announced yesterday. But everything thus far has just been referred to as a proposal and not so much a race, leading some to question whether it will happen or not. In fact, in 1981, at one point, there was supposed to be a Formula One race in downtown Chicago. That ultimately fell apart. There was also a kart race proposed at one point and announced. That also didn't happen. Just remember, this is what they replaced Road America for, which the track confirmed yesterday that they are off of the NASCAR schedule for next year. The most interesting thing shown off yesterday was the proposed circuit. And it's very similar to the one that was in iRacing over a year ago. And it's very much 90 degree corners. Uh, don't expect too much technicality here. Uh, now, for stock cars, this is probably going to produce exactly the show that NASCAR is looking for. Which is to say, uh, with a lot of 90 degree corners, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have dive bombs. You're going to have cars coming together. You're going to have a lot of crashes. I suspect, and I said as much on Twitter yesterday, that there's going to be a lot of yellows during this race. There's going to be a lot of crashes, and everybody complaining about it right now will love it because it will be chaotic. Um, it won't be a very good race, I don't think, uh, but it will be quite uh, quite spectacular from a, uh, from a perspective of a lot of cars crashing into each other and, and stupid things happening and people throwing helmets at each other. Now, the, the thing that, that stood out to me is the crossover between turns 1 and turn 6. Now, that's not unprecedented. A lot of people are talking about the lack of runoff that will be between the two longest straightaways on the track. Um, they did do that. Or, or there are two street circuit examples that I can think of that have that sort of a uh, safety concern, I guess, for lack of a better term. Long Beach actually has it, where turn one, and I think it's turn, oh, I think it's one and six at Long Beach, too, uh, where cars theoretically could go flying off the end of the track and end up on an, a completely different tr side of the track where opposite traffic is headed. I think Singapore was like this as well, or still is. I think Singapore is still on the Formula 1 calendar. I think there were a couple of corners at, at Singapore that were like this as well. But it has to be said that, that stock cars seem to lose their brakes a lot more than, than other forms of racing. So, yeah. I guess we'll find out uh, when and if this ever happens. But I... So, when this was all announced... Or, or this has been in the works for a while, right? And one of the things that I realized I didn't have the knowledge base on was local Chicago. The good news is I actually have a younger brother who lived in Chicago for five years, just recently moved out of there. But uh, he gave me some really great insight about this, and in particular once we started getting some details yesterday. So here is what my brother had to say and I'll just kind of relay it. I wish I would have recorded this conversation because it was pretty good. But uh, I think enough one one land is probably enough for this video. The interesting thing, or the, or the first thing that stood out to me about our conversation was that that he was surprised that it was on Fourth of July weekend. Uh, he actually used the words, uh, "It's one of the least safe weekends in Chicago." Now he didn't necessarily mean like gun violence because that's what everybody's going to right now. Um, in the comment sections of every single thing you see about Chicago. But his point was more that it's just the fact that everybody's got time off. There's a lot of people around in Chicago. There's a lot of fireworks being shot off. There's just a lot more chaotic energy, I guess you could say, in Chicago on 4th of July weekend. 
And that kind of goes into the next point, which was he was surprised it was right downtown, it, that it wasn't kind of on the outskirts. I mean, it was it's right essentially in the center of the city. And to that point, he was also surprised that it was using any of Lakeshore Drive, uh, although he clarified that when you look at the how, how big the circuit is, it really isn't a very big circuit in terms of uh, street courses. And Lakeshore Drive isn't a very big part of it, but how it was explained to me is that Lakeshore Drive is essentially like the main drag or the main way out of Chicago. So the thought process is, even if you've got some of that road closed, it's going to cause some traffic problems, which I'm sure the locals will not enjoy very much. Speaking of that, uh, parking apparently is going to be really tough down there. I guess, from what I understand from that conversation, the parking garages are there's a lot of parking but it's fairly expensive so we'd have to see if if chicago would do some sort of a deal where they would reduce the uh cost of the parking garage or subsidize the parking garages to have cheaper parking or even i suggested in our conversation they could do something like bell isle and and uh have people park at like soldier field or something and bust them in, over to the racetrack uh, now chicago is not new to big events and that was something that my brother really stressed. It, it's not so much a worry that Chicago won't be able to handle a race like this. My brother was very confident in that. Uh, the, the, the problem is the leadership. Uh, he did not express a whole lot of confidence in particular with Lori Lightfoot. A lot of people seem to be expecting that she might get voted out this November. I guess there's an election for her coming up in the near future and it doesn't exactly seem like she's very popular even in the city of Chicago and she's one of the driving forces behind this race. So, yeah, that's very, very curious. Very, very curious. So that's what I've learned about Chicago. Now, Kyle Busch. David Wilson of Toyota Racing Development talked to NBC Sports about Kyle Busch's future in the NASCAR Cup Series. Here are a couple of key quotes, and the full article will be linked down in the description below because it is well worth reading if you are at all concerned about whether or not Kyle Busch will be in the Cup Series next year. Here's what David Wilson had to say. If there's no sponsorship there, referring to Joe Gibbs Racing and a recent sponsor falling through for Kyle Busch, maybe we can create a bridge somewhere. We have contingency plans. Rest assured, we're thinking about this in every way this can go. We're in a bad place right now. We've got some tremendously heavy lifting in front of us. I'm just going to say it. I don't think Kyle Busch is going to be at Joe Gibbs Racing next year in the NASCAR Cup Series. Now, it could age very badly to say that, but typically, the fiscal year is, what, two or three months away from, from rolling over? I guess the fiscal year, I've, I've heard this explained. I haven't taken a business course, okay? Uh, that's why we, we bring Adam Stern on the channel. But I guess the, the fiscal year typically, or when companies kind of lock in sponsorships for the next year, meaning 2023, is around September. Well, it's almost August, so essentially they've got like a month and a half to get a sponsorship deal done for Kyle Busch. They had a sponsor, as that article has stated, but that sponsor fell through. So now, Kyle Busch, one of the highest paid drivers in NASCAR, and isn't looking to get a pay cut may well be on the outside looking in. And it's this is the other thing. It's not like Joe Gibbs is exactly light on drivers. And in particular, drivers who are related to him by blood. Hint, hint, Ty Gibbs, who's looked very good. So, it, it does, and, and that's the other thing too, which I thought was very interesting. There was an interview that Bob Pockers did with Kyle Busch where there was an implication that maybe, maybe Tyler Reddick could move over to... Uh, Joe Gibbs racing for a year before 2311 gets him. And then the thought process is, well, maybe Kyle Busch goes over to Richard Childress racing. But where does Richard Childress get the money to pay Kyle Busch? That's going to be very, very interesting to see where all these things land. I guess the other thing that I could see with Kyle Busch just to keep him in the Cup Series, much less with Joe Gibbs Racing, would be potentially to expand 2311 Racing 
maybe Toyota buys a charter for that team, gets Kyle Busch in that seat, and then uh, essentially, in some ways, maybe seat swaps with, with Redick because Redick would be able to be paid by Joe Gibbs because he would be a less expensive driver. And then maybe 2311 has the money to pay Kyle Busch for a year. I, I don't know. This doesn't seem like a situation in which Kyle Busch is going to come out on top of at this time. When you got the, the CEO of, of Toyota Racing Development essentially saying, we're in a bad place, I would tend to believe him. But what do you think? Is Kyle Busch going to be in NASCAR at all next year? And if so, where will he be? Let me know down in the comments also what you think of Chicago. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.